thank you. Welcome everyone, if you just join. Oh, this, I wanted to, this to go in a slideshow, but. Hi everyone, welcome. Hi everyone, welcome on. Um, welcome to our August virtual signature series luncheon. If you just joined us, um, well, we will be starting in a few minutes. And this event will be recorded and shared at the end. So in the meantime, I don't wanna run too late, but in the meantime, if you'd like to share in the chat, tell us, uh, tell us where you work and what you do. Um, maybe also what you hope to learn and uh, here to, in today's luncheon. Um, and are you working remotely or at the office? Uh, I know most of you are probably working at home. Um, so yeah, just share with us um, and feel free to also share your LinkedIn profile so we can all connect virtually, of course, as for now. And we will join in a few minutes. I'm not sure everyone can see the sponsors going on, but uh, <laughs> so again, in the chat, if you'd like to share where you work, what you do, um, what you're hoping to hear to, in today's luncheon and um, share your LinkedIn profile to connect with others and tell us if you're working from home or remotely, or from home or at the office, I, I mean. I'll be looking at my two screens during the presentation. <clears throat> okay. Well, I cannot see how many if people are in yet, but I believe so. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start sharing my slides with everyone. Okay, I can see some people working from home, in the office, remotely. Yeah, feel free to share your LinkedIn profile for, to everyone. Let's see, emails if you're comfortable with it as well. Okay. Well, let's get started. Can everyone hear me okay? Hope so. Awesome. Well, hi everyone. Welcome to our virtual signature series luncheon. I'm Alexandra Lloyd, president of AMA Birmingham, and I'm really, really excited to be here. First event of the year. We're kicking this off uh, with all of you today. And if you haven't already, just get uh, your comfortable chair, grab your lunch, something to drink and let's get started. So before we start our program, I would like to uh, and introduce our speaker of today. I'd like to reiterate our mission and make just a few announcements. So as some of you may know, um, already know, well, our mission is really to serve the Birmingham marketing community by providing stellar programming, quality networking, and industry knowledge. And despite COVID, despite the pandemic, we still want to do that. And that's what we are doing um, throughout the year to, to really um, give you that added benefits in the marketing and allow you to learn, connect, and grow. We got, in the past month or so, a few new members that joined or renewed and whether you are a student, you're just starting your, your job, or you're a well-established marketer, um, becoming a member can really move your career forward. 
and it allows you to connect with um, it's by connecting you actually with marketing knowledge, high quality training, and a lot of tools and tactics, tactics of course, and networking as well, virtual and in person. Eventually, we'll get there. We'll get back there. And um, so you can see there we have some members that are also volunteers on the board, and these are the people that you can see at the bottom. Um, the volunteers are really the people that are making this organization continue to offer you the programs like we have today. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to recognize them and welcome everyone um, uh, as a new member. So volunteers, uh, it's an opportunity to really manage all kinds of aspects that you could potentially do in your day-to-day -day job. Um, but it is really, it provides a lot of opportunities to make strong connection again with marketers, develop skills, and give back to your community. And I think what a better way to do that now. Um, you know, people are trying to engage with others and, and continue to grow uh, despite the, the, the virtual connections that we're in. So it, it's a great time to, to be involved. And um, volunteering, again, is just good. It builds your resume. And I know so many people on the board that had interviews before with employers, and it's often time around their involvement with AMA that the conversation goes. Uh, and I include myself in that, where employees most of the time, you know, they always love to have employees that are active in their community. And AMA is a great way to do that. So if you're interested in any of those, um, any uh, and any involvement, membership, program, uh, sponsorship, join us. You can email volunteer at amabirmingham.org. I did want to mention a special offer that uh, we have for with the Chief Marketing Officer Institute, the CMO Institute. For those who are not familiar with that organization here in Birmingham, it is, and I'm going to kind of tell you exactly what it shows on their website, but uh, it is an executive development program to prepare early to mid-career marketing leaders to increase level of responsibility in their organization. And it's, a feature, it's featuring curriculum designed by leading academicians and senior level executives. This certificate program is intended to serve as a postgraduate enhancement for individuals holding a Master of Business Administration or other business-related graduate degree. So this is an opportunity uh, to follow a program to be part of this nine-month program. Um, and you have a deadline, August 31. But uh, it's a great way to, to get to that next step in your, in your, in your career and your job professionally to grow at an, a higher level. And if you are an AMA member, you could have your full tuition paid entirely. So it usually costs $1,150, so $1,150. And um, if you are an AMA member, you could get that for free. Um, so that's really exciting, really a great offer, really happy that uh, the CMO Institute wanted to partner with us on this. Um, but again, if you are not necessarily an AMA member, you can still sign up and uh, be part of it but that's a little benefit we wanted to give to our members. I wanted to thank our partners and sponsors that also allow us to offer you programs every month and, uh, and here and then. And uh, the growth of AMA really depends on the, the contribution of them. So it would not be possible without our partners and, and sponsor. So I want to thank all of these companies. Uh, thank you for your generous support. And uh, learn, connect, and grow. Yes, this is what we do. And um, this, is, um, th this is our motto. And we just hope that you continue to be part of our organization, Theresa May, Reputation Relationships. That's what we are all about. And without any further ado, now that my introductions, uh, announcements are made, I would like to introduce our speaker, Pamela Cook. Pamela Cook is a seasoned media and marketing professional with close to 20 years experience in the field of communications. 
Mrs. Cook's professional expertise includes developing marketing and advertising strategies and creating growth strategies for targeted market areas. Her experience and education has helped to hone her marketing and sales expertise in business management acumen. She continues to build upon her leadership skills throughout extensive community service, networking, and hobbies, which include international travel and when time permits, reading, photography, and cooking. She's currently the Director of Multicultural Marketing and Community Affairs for Coca-Cola Bottling Company United. And she is responsible for multicultural marketing and community relations initiatives throughout the company's central region. And that includes Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, the Tennessee Valley area, and some parts of Georgia. As part of her role, she will continue to develop and strengthen partnerships with the HBCUS, Historically Black Colleges and Universities, something Coca-Cola United values greatly and has enjoyed for decades. Today, Mrs. Cook will share with us how to create the life you want and the steps to get there. Please welcome Pamela Cook. Good morning or good afternoon, rather, I should say. And thank you so much for having me. I know we plan to get together in March, but um, life happened <laughs> and we couldn't. So I'm so, so happy we could reschedule and be together today. And I, I'm just really excited to be here and share with everybody. Um, I just have a little short talk and that I want to, some short information I want to share with you. And then we're going to open up for questions as I'm hoping you have plenty of questions for me. Um, I don't mind answering them. I know sometimes uh, people have questions about, well, how do you get into this? Or how do you do that? Or how do you do business with Coke? I'm here to answer all of that for you. And I want to, okay? Um, as you all were signing in and uh, putting your LinkedIn or checking in that you were working from home and such, I recognize so many names there. So hello to all my friends. I see everybody and I wanted to do a special hello to our good friends at Info Media. We work with them a lot here at Coca-Cola. So um, they're wonderful to work with. So it was great to see the team there logged in today as well. So uh, as mentioned earlier, um, I am the Director of Multicultural Marketing at Coke. Uh, United. We're a bottler uh, as part of the Coca-Cola system. Everybody knows the Coca-Cola system in Atlanta where they develop the brands and market the brands, but I'm with the bottler and our job is we market it and we touch the communities and the retailers um, directly. So it's a collaborative effort, but I'm with the bottling group. Yes, my territory is pretty much uh, Tennessee Valley, Alabama, parts of Georgia, Florida Panhandle, and a few other places, but our company's footprint is very vast. I mean, we've got the state of Georgia, the state of Louisiana, South Mississippi. We have what you'd like to call kind of the, the deep south traditional deep south area. So I could be in Atlanta one day and New Orleans the next day. So it's a lot of traveling. You know, it's, it's crazy right now that we're in this very unique time, but if life were normal, there's no, I, I have no idea where I'd be today. It, you, I could be anywhere. I travel pretty much every week, but it's exciting. I get to meet a lot of people, engage a lot of events and activities, and best off, we get to make change with people. So it's a lot of fun. So I want to just get in a little deeper about what I do. So yes, my role is marketing our brands to ethnic communities and customers. So I make sure that we're speaking directly to African-American communities and, and people of color uh, in a manner that they can relate to. So it can include African-American, it can be Hispanic, it can be international, it can be Asian, it might be the faith-based community. My role is to be the voice of reason when our marketing plans come out and say, hey, that's not going to connect. Wait, how does, why does that ad look like that? Or are we sure it's, you know, these ambiguous ads? Let's not do an ambiguous ad. Let's make sure that it's 
more realistic, you know, that people can relate to it. So that's a, that's a big piece of my, my role here. Um, I also work with historically black colleges and universities, as mentioned before. As a matter of fact, I was on with two schools this morning. Uh, everybody's getting back into the swing of school, you know, and a lot of schools have hybrid programs or virtual programs. So our relationship with HBCUs goes very, very deep. We're uh, there from a scholarship standpoint. Sometimes we go and teach a class. Uh, there's the athletic uh, department that are very, very active with, the band department, um, the business schools, of course, because a lot of students come out and uh, want to go into various business disciplines that are part of our organizations. Also, uh, we have a summer program called Pay It Forward that InfoMedia helps us out with a whole lot, where we bring HBCU students to our campuses, our Coca-Cola offices, we call them our campuses, and they'll spend a week with us touring the different departments, learning about how we go to business. Um, it's always amazing to me when the students realize that we have chemists on staff at Coca-Cola because chemistry is a big part of what we do as in you have ingredients and the science that goes behind uh, a lot of brands and, and, the, and making it and putting it together. So that's been a lot of fun to watch them you know, discover all the different disciplines that we have in our office. Now, I like to think they have the most fun when they come with me because uh, we get to go to events and luncheons and you know get to do the cool stuff. So, uh, but it's a really great piece of what we do and we're excited to have students every year. We just had them with us virtually uh, a week ago. We had 32 students uh, with us, so it was, it was quite the undertaking. <laughs> um, in addition to that, I'm also involved in stakeholder relations. I in, engage a lot of elected officials and policy matters that affect our business and affect your lifestyle and my lifestyle as well. So with that said, I am extremely engaged this week in the Democratic Convention as it's been airing live. I'm seeing a lot of friends of ours on the national platforms um, and, and understanding, you know, just what things may look like next year. We have to be in tune with that and how it's going to affect the way we go to business and how it's going to affect our lives. So uh, I'm very, very engaged with that. One thing I did notice just last night is I really hope they keep the formal um, roll call virtual for Democrat and Republican. That was just a really great piece to watch virtually last night because you got to see America and America is just so vast and there's so many people that make up, make up our country and it was really great to witness that um, virtually like that. And in addition to that, uh, when life happens, and it does happen, COVID-19 has happened, hurricanes happen, tornadoes come, uh, life just happens. And I, I get, oftentimes I'm pulled into our community relations department, and we answer a lot of calls across our entire platform um, to help people. Some, um, an example of that is, I think we all remember a couple of years ago, there was a big hurricane in Panama City. Remember all the damage and everything that happened there? Our office literally packed up and we moved to Panama City for uh, about a month because we had associates who lived there. We had, and then there's the community as a whole, but we took care of our associates first. So we went there to work for them so they could take care of their homes, so they could take care of their insurance matters and handle their family business. They didn't need to worry about work. We covered it for them. And then of course we wanted to be there for the community as well. So we, I mean, we literally packed up all the water we could find uh, from all of our locations and took it to Panama City. We wanted to serve the community. Um, I share that one story because it was so synonymous and so significant because for days there wasn't much power in Panama City. Uh, there were curfews everywhere. So it was really, um, it was uncomfortable, you know, for a lot of people, but the spirit of our associates and the spirit of the leadership of our organization, it was never a question of if we were going, it was, well, what time do I need to be there? And um, we, we really served and stayed down there as long as they needed us. Most of us were there for about a month, but, and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Um, it, it's been really great to show up like that. So with all of those departments that I touched, the, great, the 
interesting thing is that no two days are the same. Every day is interesting. Every day can be, some days are a circus and some days are uh, another circus. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy my job. Um, as you all know, COVID-19 has changed how many of us go to business or how a lot of companies are having to shift right now. We've also had to face some racial unrest during these last few months that have caused a lot of organizations to examine um, their beliefs and thoughts on some matters, if you will. I'm very happy that our company, Coca-Cola, has been a leader in taking a stand on social justice issues. It was never a question. It was never a, what are we going to do? The company came out with, with the statement. The company took a position immediately. And uh, I think it's really, really admirable that we did that. Uh, we're all committed to doing the work internally and externally to combat racism. Um, we're, we're doing work internally by examining examining our practices in-house just to make sure we're doing what we need to do to create opportunities for everybody to be successful in the company. We're uh, engaging various community organizations, which we've always done, but we're going to continue to do that and go deeper uh, with some grassroots organizations that are really working hard to make a difference in the communities that we live, work, and serve in. Uh, as a matter of fact, one thing I'll share with you is that uh, Coca-Cola has taken a global stand on social media. We've been in a social silence campaign uh, since July. Uh, we started July, early July, wasn't the first, it was the first week of July, uh, to be socially silent on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we haven't done any marketing, any direct advertising on there that whole month. Well, we recently decided to extend that through the month of August. So you won't see Coca-Cola promoted actively across social media again until maybe around Labor Day. We did that because there's just no place for um, racism and, and negativity on social media platforms. They were designed to be friendly and fun and engaging. But when it starts taking a turn that people become offended and attacked, for various reasons and such on there, it, it causes a lot of challenges. Now, as marketers and in people in marketing situations, think about this. You could probably figure in your mind the, the amount of money Coca-Cola would spend across those social platforms in just one month. Imagine two months of that revenue being this. If you're an account executive in media, I'm sure you can do the numbers very, very quickly. That's a, that's a big hit for somebody. But what you have to understand is you can put your money, your money can speak for you a lot of times, as well as your voice. So sometimes going silent is the best way to get someone's attention on, hey, we've got to make some changes. Hey, there's some things that's got to be addressed. And it's, it's all being addressed. It, it speaks very loudly. There were some other national brands that came on board as well and paused their marketing as well. So these social media platforms that are used to receiving some really significant dollars for advertising have experienced a great loss these last two months. So I think we'll see some changes very soon in that regard. But that's all part of us rolling up our sleeves and doing the work. That's part of us being accountable for our customers and consumers and everybody that has been so great to Coca-Cola all of these years. How dare we not stand up for everyday man? That's what we're here for. Um, I really enjoy my job. I enjoy my career. I'm very, very fortunate. How many people do you know say that, huh? <laughs> but I do. I really, really enjoy my job. I used to love coming to work every day, but we haven't been here since March. So I enjoy going to my kitchen table every day now, but it's really great. No two days are the same. I get to affect change, positive change in the lives of so many people and business owners and entrepreneurs on a regular basis basis. And there's no greater joy than being able to do that with part of a worldwide brand like a Coca-Cola. Now, my journey to get here wasn't easy. It had a lot of bumps and bruises and breaks and heartbreaks, but I'm here. And I just think the sky is the limit from here. It's really amazing. And what I wanted to share with you 
is that there are three simple steps that can get you to the life that you look to have, that you want to achieve. It's very, very simple. They are to ask, they're to believe, and to receive. How simple is that? These are three very, very simple steps to create that life that you want. Ask. Simply ask the question. Open your mouth and ask for what you want. How simple is that? Ask more questions of your clients. Ask for the business. How many times have you made a presentation to somebody? Have you, and it's just this beautiful document that you've worked two weeks on and it's got all these beautiful colors and graphics and all this wonderfulness on it. And you've just gathered all these people in this room and just really poured your heart out into this magnificent presentation. And at the end, you didn't ask for the business. You just assume that everybody was just gonna jump on board and say, yeah, sure, we'll do that. You have to ask, you have to. You must ask the question. And how many times have you asked your boss for a plan to grow in your company? Everybody goes through a review period. Do you ever ask your boss, hey, what's a growth plan for me? Let's figure it out now. So when we get together every year, we know where we're, we're tracking, we know what we're doing. Ask, you must ask. You can miss a life-changing opportunity because you did not ask. You must make your request known. The answer just might be yes. It might be sure. It may be, you know what, you're right. Let's do that. You must ask. Believe. Believing is the second step, but it's also the most difficult one. Believing is the greatest step you'll ever take in creating the life you really, really want. Believing doesn't waver. It's about absolute faith. It's convincing others that you're sure about what you want, sure about what you believe, and sure about who you are. True story. My predecessor for this current job of multicultural marketing was retiring. Um, so you can imagine there was a lot of networking, politicking, and, and resource. everybody was wanting to apply for the job internally, of course. So I was one of those people. I wanted to apply for it too. I went into my then boss's office and said to him, I understand blank is retiring. I want that job. How are we going to make it happen? You see what I did there? I asked. <laughs> I was in, I believed I deserved the job and I was in the process of convincing him that I believed it too, that, you know, I needed him to believe with me. Well, needless to say, he was very helpful in positioning me for the job. My work I had done previously um, was a testament that I was prepared to, to do the work, no problem. So don't think it's just an easy road. You must do the work to get there. Well, um, and just one thing I wanted to say about that too is that when you believe in yourself, really, really, really believe in yourself, others will too, and they'll move a mountain on your behalf. I promise you, it'll happen for you. It's done, it, it's happened for me, I did it too, and it can happen for you. The final step is to receive. To receive means to be given, to be presented with, or to be paid for. Everybody wants to get paid for their work, right? Yeah, so you wanna be ready to receive. You have to be ready for it when it happens though. When a prayer is answered, it can be so, so scary. Um, have you ever said, oh Lord, if you get me through this, I promise I'll do, or dear God, if you just help me out here, I promise on this, trust me, it will happen at some point in your life. If it hasn't already, just get ready for it. We've all been there. Receiving can catch you off guard if you're not ready. It's your turn to receive. It's your turn to be rewarded. It's your turn to be saluted. It's your turn to be recognized for everything you've been doing all of these years. As you create the life you want, you'll be a recipient of so much over and over and over again. Please remember to pay it forward, or better yet, reach back and pay it back and help somebody else come up, if you don't mind. So are you ready to receive? Of course you are. Are you ready to be great? Why not? Are you ready to grow your business? Of course you are. Ask, believe, and receive. The three simple steps to create the life you want. I believe for you. I believe you're successful. I believe you're a winner. I believe you're a game changer. I believe your family is so proud of you. 
I believe in you. I believe in all 29 of you that are logged in today. I want you to stay in touch with you. I'm on LinkedIn, so please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today, and I want to talk with each one of you. I think we've got about 30 minutes left, so we can get in a lot of questions. But thank you for listening. Ask, believe, and receive. Three very, very simple steps to get you to the life that you want. Now, let's take some questions. Hey, okay, so it looks like we have one question that came in. Um, when Coca-Cola went silent on social media, how was that presented as a concept internally? Um, to executives and what were the discussions surrounding those risks you mentioned, especially with taking a, a very public political stance? Well, yeah, it was, it, it started with, at the top really, with our global uh, CEO because um, it was, the timing on it was just, just so organic, just with what had been going on around George Floyd and all of the police matters and the protests and, and, and such that were going on. And it was just a way to say, hey, you know, when you attach your brand to a public forum, like a, a social media platform, like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, for example, you have to be mindful that when someone is reading a negative or, or disturbing comment, your brand is attached to that. So guess what? People associate you with that as well. It's just like growing up, you know, the company you keep determines, you know, how people are going to perceive you. So it wasn't very hard. It was just getting with our ad agencies, you know, to, to lay out the plan uh, on how we were going to do it and then just sending the messages out. It wasn't very difficult at all. It was a very easy decision. It was easy to disseminate that information to everybody in the company because everybody was on board with it. But uh, it came from our global CEO on that. It looks like we had another one come in. Um, what is your biggest challenge that you currently encounter in your role at Coca-Cola? My biggest challenge is that I can't help everybody as much as I want to. I mean, there are some wonderful people doing some amazing work in the community. There are folks putting on some super events all over the place. There are great uh, startup businesses that I wish we could do business with. That's the biggest thing. I wish I could say yes a whole lot more than, than I'm able to. But, I, you know, we're getting there. We're getting to where we can kind of, you know, maybe not yes this year, but yes next year, or maybe not on this event, but the next one. But I, I wish I could say yes a lot more. It looks like there was a follow-up to that one. Um, what advice would you give to businesses out there on how to approach diversity? You know, um, we've got a poll that we wanted to put up as well, I think, is it, is it out there, just to kind of see what your companies are doing in the, in the space of diversity. The question is, what is your organization doing for diversity and inclusion? And you see the choices there. So we invite you to offer your um, your thoughts on there and click one of the options so we can kind of gauge what, what companies are doing. Um, but for us, I'm sorry, say the question again. I was reading that and I've lost my thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to businesses out there on how to approach diversity? Yeah, again, you've got to ask. You know, nobody's an expert on it. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You know, um, um, I'm a black woman, we all know, we see that. You know, what I've been, what's been great here is that some members of our leadership, you know, our, our CEO, you know, he's like, you know, I, I don't know, you gotta tell me, you gotta tell me. And you have to trust that when you ask someone what it is, you gotta believe it, you know, and you can't just create a solution. This isn't something that you can fix tomorrow. This is a lifetime journey. It's a commitment to change. It's a commitment to, you know, making sure that looking at your staff, you've got to look at your staff and say, what does our staff look like? Do we have any women on the staff? Do we have African Americans on the staff? Is, are we represented with the Hispanic or Asian culture? You know, uh, is Indian culture represented on it? You've got to just do that self-evaluation 
internally in your own organization and ask the questions and then understand and, and ask how committed are we to doing that. Um, that's the advice I would give and you can't be afraid to just kind of gently challenge your company on it. Now don't go get fired, but gently challenge your companies on what are we doing? How are we doing something? What do we do? They may tap you to be the champion of that. You never know. All right, it looks like we've got another one in. Um, how has Coca-Cola adapted its marketing strategies um, both during the pandemic and um, also amidst the protests and how has have they kind of put a a happy, positive experience to some of it um, while still taking that political stance. Yeah, so when COVID really first started in March, you know, our first um, position was to make sure our associates were safe. So we took the internal approach immediately, just making sure the teams were good. We have to have a standard of excellence when it comes to um, safety and, and cleanliness anyway, uh, because of the business we're in. We just upped it by a thousand percent, you know, but it always been in place, but making sure that our teams had their masks, make sure that, you know, they had hand sanitizers, gloves, making sure everybody was safe and had everything they needed to be successful first. We sent all of our office teams and anybody who could work remotely, everybody please do so immediately. And we're still on um, remote. We're not scheduled to come back uh, until October. But remember when things first started, what did we all do? We ran to the grocery store. We had to go like, oh God, I don't know what's happening. I got to go get groceries. I got to go. I got to go. So, but we still had teams that had to deliver all that water you bought and all those soft drinks you bought. We had to get it to the stores. So we had to make sure they were safe because they were having to interact with the grocery store teams. They were having to interact interact with consumers. So making sure they had masks, making sure they were supported was first. Then our associates that were work teleworking, making sure they had all the tools they need to work from home safely uh, and be fine there. And then from our advertising and marketing standpoint, uh, uh, we kind of we, did, we pulled back a little bit, not all of it. We just pulled back a little bit. We uh, stopped our events, of course. A lot of events ended up canceling that normally would have happened. So we just kind of pulled all of that back. But what we did was in many communities around this whole territory that we serve, there was a lot of um, nonprofit organizations and community-based organizations that needed help. We've seen people in the food bank lines. We've seen uh, children that are in need. They're elderly who couldn't get the cleaning supplies they needed um, to, you know, to maintain their homes as we were all being instructed on. We needed hand sanitizer. We needed all of these things. Well, we stepped up in so many areas and I, I'm really proud. I, I got tapped to lead that charge. So we probably committed, it was almost a million dollars to community organizations all over the Southeast where we could help super serve um, food banks, um, uh, different, I'm trying to think, uh, and without giving away children's organizations, um, elderly organizations, but they were very grassroots organizations and we could impact them city by city by city. In the greater Birmingham area, we were part of the Birmingham Strong when Mayor Whitfin launched that uh, to help small businesses. We were right there uh, when all of that happened. Now you won't hear about it in the press because we don't do it for that reason. So, you know, we're a total beverage company, but we're a community organization first. And a lot of times people just never know what we do behind the scenes, but trust, we're always there, always. Thank you, that was a great question. Absolutely. Um, it looks like we've got a question about when uh, Coca-Cola went silent on social media. Uh, do you know what impact that had um, on the marketing team specifically? It looks like uh, we're being asked about website traffic and, and if there was a decline there. For us or for them? <laughs> yeah, for Coca-Cola. <laughs> You know, nobody's really said, I don't, it, it, it's not really the big concern right now, you know, because we're still in the pandemic, um, managing that kind of activity um, hasn't been the big focal point. 
if you will. The focal point is just the safety of customers and consumers. So we'll know, we'll get back to all of that in, in time, but we're not, not really, that's just not a real big issue at this moment, at this moment. Yes, we're, it, we didn't do it from a standpoint of how's it gonna affect our numbers? What does that mean for our engagement? What, how are we gonna manage those impressions and all? We, we didn't do it for that reason. We did it because there was a bigger matter at hand and that bigger matter was racism and that bigger matter is using our voice and our dollars to make a stand uh, in that realm. But we'll be back. Don't worry, we'll be back on all of that. <laughs> all right. Thank um, you. Go ahead, dear. Thank what? you, Julia. Is there more questions? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think we just got the poll results. Um, so what is your organization doing for diversity and inclusion? And uh, I wanted to take just a second, uh, Julia Pedges, uh, she is our Assistant Vice President of Technology on the board. I just want to acknowledge her helping out with the chat. Thank you. And we also have Joy Brown, uh, she is our VP of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. And that's an initiative actually that the board took last year to hopefully bring more diversity and more inclusion in everything that we do through our speakers, our members, um, and all of, the, uh, all of our initiatives. Um, Joy, did you wanna share some? Um, I'll, let you, I'll let you share the results of the poll. Uh, I know you had questions too, and maybe you can continue with the additional questions afterwards that Julia, sure. you have. Absolutely, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to finally get to hear you speak, Pamela. I was really sad in March when everything <laughs> everything hit the fan and we couldn't actually meet in person. I hate that we can't be in person, but I think, you know, just hearing you speak is equally as valuable. Um, I was sitting here taking notes myself and everything you said was just extremely relatable. Um, but I just did see the results from the poll pop up and I was really excited actually to see the results. So um, I can I can go ahead and share those. Um, yeah. So basically it says uh, adding a statement on your website, 23% of the people answer that they do that. Actually the, the most, um, the, what your organization is doing, the most um, results were for internal conversations. So people want to engage, they want to know they are curious, I imagine, too. I mean, I am curious. You know, we all kind of want to do better, learn what we can do, um, and, and get the conversations going. And I think that's a good first step. And mm -hmm. Pamela, you mentioned it. That's part of what you guys have been doing, too, but even more. Uh, so that's the first. And then, and then community engagement, second. The statement on the website, third, at 23%. And something else, 15%, nothing in the moment, 8%. So the majority of people uh, have at least conversation internally. Right, I was extremely excited to see that, you know, internal conversations was right there at the top because I think that is the most important thing. You know, you see all of these statements coming out, but you know, we're at a point right now where you've got to put like those actions behind those statements. So seeing those internal conversations means that those statements aren't empty and people really are having those difficult conversations. And I, I am so excited to be a part of AMA and to help create you know, a safe space where we can have these difficult conversations. We know they're not easy. I don't think they're easy for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and so just hearing you speak, Pam, to what you all are doing with such a large brand as Coca-Cola. It's, it's very admirable and um, <laughs> working in somewhat of a similar role, I know that um, it can be very um, emotionally draining at times as much as it is rewarding. Um, and so I, I'm extremely excited to see, it gives me hope seeing the results from this poll and just hearing you speak and even seeing some of the questions and the curiosity that is coming across. I think we have several more questions. So I am looking back in the chat. Just a minute. Let's see. So this was this question came up twice. I did see that, and I was actually curious about this myself. So, were the funds that you would have spent, um, you know, through marketing on social media, were they diverted to social justice causes? Um. They weren't diverted to social justice causes. What we did is we created a whole new 
uh, line item for social justice, which is which was great. Um, so they're still there because the year isn't over. So we'll we'll be back full force with a, a huge ad campaign um, that starts you know after Labor Day. So we'll make it up, you know. But and if we don't, okay, it's okay. Next year is still going to take care of itself. So, but because we're such a larger organization, we can do that. I understand some organizations, mid size and smaller, you they may look to reallocate funds in different areas and that's perfectly okay to do that. I think it's a great idea to have a line item in your budgets to make sure that you're intentional about supporting uh, various communities throughout the year. Um, Hispanic Heritage Month is coming up very, very soon, September 15th. You know, ask your organization, what are we doing to recognize, honor, and celebrate Hispanic heritage? Um, that's a great, great idea. You know, it's a very loyal community of people there um, and, you know, should be celebrated and honored uh, as, as any other organization. So, but that, you know, those are our, our opportunities in that. But for us, you know, we, we because we're so big, we can kind of look at it a little differently. And it, it's not a matter of having to reallocate it. We could just create and move around as we needed to. And that's just being responsive to what happens and when life happens. We're just able to respond as, as we need to. So here's another really good, I think, um, helpful question. Your answer will be very helpful to this. What initial steps would you recommend to a company or organization that's starting to make a concerted effort on diversity? What are good, solid first steps to move the needle? You know, to move the needle is look, look at your employees. You've got people on your team who represent the world. You know, pull them in first. Um, you got your team, you, you got it, people are right under your nose. So, you know, pull them in, don't use them, but um, uh, engage them, engage your teams. Don't assume you know the answers, don't think you know what is important to somebody. You got to first, you know, pull folks in, you got to listen. You may need to create a diversity team. You may want to have a community relations team and have an extension of it be engaged in social justice matters. Um, but it's all there and you know anybody can, can do those things. But the first step is really looking at who's right under your nose. Most companies have the talent right there in your own organizations. Yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I think that is always, um, you know, self-evaluation as an organization or a company is the first step. Um, I think I think those are all the questions I see, Alexandra, Julia. Unless I, unless you guys have any more. Yeah, I think we answered all of the questions. That was great, Pam. I. This opened up the conversation even more, and I'm so glad. And I'm so glad we got to reschedule you today to kind of <laughs> get those conversations going and, and have you talk. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you all for all your hard work and putting all of this together and your commitment to the communities and your leadership. It doesn't go unrecognized. You're doing a fantastic job. And I just appreciate everything you're doing. And thank y'all for everything. I'm so excited. All the folks that could log on today and, and participate. And again, I'm on LinkedIn. Please reach out. Please keep in touch. Um, you know, I'd love to just know more about what you're doing and, and keep in touch with you. I'm, I'm okay with that. Ask me questions anytime you want. I'm good with it. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, and I had a a slide here with your information. Um, I thought you were, I think you were open to share your email, so I included it here. Can y'all see my screen? Mm -hmm. I, I think we had some problems at the beginning where no one could see the screen. We can okay. see it, so, Okay, awesome. So yeah, uh, you can get in touch with Pamela on LinkedIn or by email. Uh, follow Amy Birmingham on all your social platforms and um, maybe since you haven't seen any of this, <laughs> um, I just want to show the slides of our new members and kind of just because I was talking here, you can look and now you can have a visual. Um, I apologize for the little uh, technical issues, but yeah, just wanted to welcome all of our new members. Uh, thank you, Pam, so much. This was great.
feel free to connect with her. All connect together um, to keep the conversation going and uh, continue to learn and see how we can make an impact in our community, at our work, and, and everything oh, and everything we do. Um, so if there's no more questions, uh, I guess we can, uh, I can just close it out, but I really appreciate everyone joining today. Uh, thank you, Joy. Thank you, Julia, for monitoring the chat and being there with us. Thank you so much, Pam. We really appreciated having you. Um, we should definitely work again in the future and, and help Coca-Cola or do some type of uh, uh, initiatives uh, to help even more the community. I think what you do is great and um, uh, you have all my admiration. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to it again anytime. Happy to help. Thank you. Uh, so next month um, we are having uh, another luncheon and that will be with Jared Matson. He is the CEO, CEO and co-founder at Link. Um, Link is the fastest way to exchange contact information with someone and uh, it's, it's the new technology to virtually connect actually so that will be uh, right on with the world that we live on right now and we have other events coming up so just visit our website amabirmingham.org to stay in the know and register for our upcoming events and if you don't mind before to go I uh, would love for you to take our quick survey you'll get it by email if you register to this event but the quick link is there, bit.ly slash post lunch and survey. And again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next month. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, everyone. And uh, hope you have a good afternoon. Thank you.